Hi, everybody. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and today I am extremely excited to show you this synthesizer, the Vector. Uh, the company that makes this reached out and asked me if I wanted to do a review of it, and I had seen it floating around on the internet, and um, I was like, that's insane looking, and yes, please, I would like to do that. So, they provided the unit, I have spent a bunch of time with it, and today I am here to tell you about it. First, let's hear some examples of stuff that I've made with the Vector.
So as you've heard, the Vector has a very unique sound. Uh, it can be very digital, it can be very glassy, but it can also get nasty and do some really fantastic leads. It's also really inscrutable. Um, you'll notice I have this rag here, and that's because our friend here is a touchscreen. We can move things around and manipulate it on the touchscreen. It's also bristling with knobs that control everything going on here. The Vector ships with a printed manual, which is very, very nice. I always appreciate that. And um, through the process of uh, working on this, um, I encountered some stuff and talked to the makers, and they have been very, very uh, thorough and quick to address things with firmware updates. And um, it's grown a, a decent amount since I've gotten it in uh, its features and its stability. So that said, let's talk about what the hell this thing is. <laughs> It's a polyphonic synthesizer, and uh, we're going to play a little sequence here on the Deluge, which I have feeding MIDI into this, and uh, I can also play it right here. And uh, we're going to walk through uh, sort of its sound making possibilities, and then um, hopefully that'll give you an idea of what's going on here. So let's get started. All right, so the Vector is made up of four separate corners. Each one of these corners can be set up to have a variety of timbre options. You can focus on each corner for editing by pushing the focus button and hold it down and you get back to this orbiter screen. What you're seeing on the orbiter screen is not only a waveform of what the sound is going on right now, but also this orbiter path. And you can see a little orbiter right there. You can see, since we're moving through the different corners, that we're getting different tombers. I can speed up that orbiter. And we can move through the four corner tombers quicker. I can also introduce this suborbiter, which will create tones and tombers outside of the range of the uh, orbiter trajectory. If I press this button in poly mode, each note will generate a suborbiter. And if I increase the release of this, we'll get more of them. Because the suborbiters can be synced to a beat, you can actually get rhythmic timbre changes depending on how these suborbiters are set up and in what corner. your main orbiter pattern is. You can reset the orbiter here. There are multiple orbiters over here, multiple orbiter patterns. So they get progressively complicated. And again, you can resize and move this around however you see fit. One of my favorite ways uh, to do this is using the ADSR orbiter mode. So let's go ahead and turn on our suborbiter size. Now we can change the trajectory of our pattern to the four corners, giving us incredible control over how the timbre of this particular synth, this particular synth preset will act. And we're gonna dive into the overtone generators and um, the filter in a second. But basically you can set up all four corners however you want. Default with the mod wheel is assigned to the suborbit speed. I can hit this little button right here, this dice button, and it will randomize the overtone generators, filters, and resonance. So if you ever just want some quick inspiration, you can do that. liked what you had before, you can hit the back. There are basically two layers of controls we have here. We have what we see in front of us right now, and then the lower controls, which are what's on this page. So let's go back to this page and start adjusting some of the other controls. We have a reverb, 
chorus. And a delay. With the control in auto, it's going to control what you see in front of you right now. Meaning that if I'm on this page, it will control the controls that are on this page. And if I'm on this page, it will control these ones. You can change this to lower and then control what's on this page from this page or upper and vice versa. Control what's on the other page from this page. So let's go into the second page and see what we have here. We have three different playback modes. We're in poly right now, but we do have mono and dual, and we'll get into those in a bit. Here, I can scatter and detune. The main signal. This has vibrato and tremolo. a little bit of either heavy pitch modulation or just a little bit of pitch uncertainty. So we looked at these controls the, uh, for the effects, but we have a little bit more here now too. So if I turn up the chorus, you'll see that we have a chorus speed, which can be synced or unsynced. A depth. stereo swap, and then you can actually filter the chorus color, which is pretty cool. Delay can be retimed. We can ping pong it. We have control over delay feedback. And there's a really cool thing we can do with this, which I'll show you in a bit. It has the ability to turn into a looper. And then we can filter the delay color if we want. Reverb also has some color and controls. So let's turn this up. size and reverb color. It's also a master resonance controls for all the filters. Finally, some drive. We have two options in terms of the drive routing. Because this thing does phase modulation and amplitude modulation, or phase distortion and amplitude modulation synthesis, there's some really nice opportunities for some really insane sounds using a combination of drive and different overtone generators. There's an ARP slash sequencer that we'll talk about in a bit as well. Finally, in settings, there's one thing I want to show you. You can set up channels for all the incoming and outcoming things, including separate the ARP and the uh, MIDI channels. And there's this global slowdown thing here. So let's go back to here and go to this mode. So right now I have my orbiters going at eight times or one time. You may be in a situation where you want those to go even slower. So if you go to settings and go to global slowdown, you can change this and it will slow down the perception of this uh, beat subdivision here. Right now we're uh, receiving clock from the deluge, which we can see over here. So that's a useful tool to have. All right, let's talk about sound creation, how this thing actually works from a sound perspective. So we're gonna start over on overtone one. Let's make sure all of our effects are down up our volume. <laughs> okay, so now we're listening to corner one. There are an overtone generators here. And actually, I'm gonna go back to the default patch. 
So you can see here, we have overtone generator one and overtone generator two. We have a blend and we have filter cutoff. There's a little bit more depth to this, but I wanna show you this first. So we can dial in overtones and then we can use the overtone blend knob to do two different types of sort of synthesis to them. Uh, let's see, what is it? It's uh, phase modulation and amplitude modulation. And then we have a filter cutoff control. You can actually change the filter for each corner to uh, high pass, low pass, or band pass. And then we have a resonance control for that filter. So this is how you dial in each corner of the vector. Let's go to corner two. Let's make this really different. I'm actually gonna change this filter, filter two, to a high pass. Let's go to corner three. And corner four. I know I'm back in sort of the performance view when I see the orbiter pattern again. So now that we've created these four distinct corners, depending on where we put this little friend, especially if he's tiny, we'll get extremely different sounds. You can see that our controls down here are responding. So let's go back to this and play around with a different positions of ADSR. because we have four distinct sombers we can choose from. See, as we move through, our cutoff and resonances are moving because we have different cutoffs for each section of these overtone generators, each corner. So you can really get some interesting tombers by having our friend here move around. There's also this warp function, which works differently on each one. You can see we have sort of a three-dimensional warping of our shape here. Also warp this. You choose what section of the envelope you want to warp. So right now we're going to warp this part. So I can warp it in shape and amplitude. So because the position on this is its tomber, being able to warp and change how things move through uh, is going to give you some pretty wild results. And then, of course, you can always just hit this friend right here and get a different result. Our envelope section is actually really cool, too. You can see this little button right here that says EXP. That means exponential envelope, and I'm really, really glad they put that in there because I love exponential envelopes. 
can also switch to linear. And then here, we have the ability to choose between our amp envelope having a different shape than our orbiters, which is pretty damn cool. neat <laughs> it's just so much fun to play with and like every once in a while you'll like hit on some kind of crazy combination of things and um, it'll just be really 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 fun so I'm gonna set up a different sequence here and we're going to switch to uh, mono and dual mode and hear what those sound like okay give me just a second So now we have a sequence that's a bit more uh, appropriate for a, a mono instrument. There's poly mode again. So in mono mode, we have the ability to detune and also glide if we want to. I don't think I have any notes that are uh, overhanging here, but glide can go really long. A little bit of glide goes a long way. Let's go ahead and overhang some notes so that we can hear that glide built in. There we go. Okay. So in mono mode, um, the whole thing kind of sounds a little bit different um, and it sounds pretty dope. Already getting a nice sort of almost super soft feeling to it. Let's make this uh, crazier, shall we? Ooh, we're a little loud. love how it can get those like sort of glassy, uh, almost formant sounding things. Let's go ahead and switch to... our envelope mode. Now let's go back over here and start increasing our drive. In this mode, while we don't have any of the actual corners focused, we can actually control all this stuff down here with these knobs. So what it's going to do is it's going to um, turn all of them relative to each other, which is just fantastic. And that goes for the overtone blend and generators as well. Just a really awesome digital sound to it that I really, really like. And then when you bring it down and use the, um, the corners as almost like an envelope uh, for your filter, it sounds really gritty and dirty. <laughs> it's really cool.
right, let's switch over to dual mode and hear what that sounds like. Go ahead and turn our drive down. So in uh, dual mode, we have the ability to turn up a follower, basically, which can be detuned. So um, you can see our follower volume is here. Let's go ahead and turn that down. And it can offset it. Oops. Offset it in the suborbiter. Um, OK, so um, let us uh, play with the detune follower and bias. This is actually a pitch detune. So there's about an octave. And then we can actually shove them off into the uh, stereo field, which is really nice. make a pad let's just do that let's make a pad we've done a lot of fun stuff right now um, let's go ahead and jump into a little bit about the corner select thing because it's a little inscrutable um, and I'm still wrapping my head around it too because there's a lot of options basically so if we go into corner select here we get this matrix and you can see that we have our four corners and our four filters and you can see on each one of these blend things here that we have a little sort of icon, a little uh, corner icon, so I guess you'd call it, <laughs> next to each one. And what that means is by default, each corner generator goes to its own filter, and it's a blend of generator one and generator two. But you have an immense control over <laughs> Of how this is done to an almost dizzying extent. Um, like I said, I'm still wrapping my head around this part. Let's let's dial in some uh, settings for each one of these things. So you saw that when I hit focus, I moved to one of the corners here. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust. Here's where I get a chance to change my oops, change my filter type. High pass, band pass. Low pass, and of course each one has resonance. But I can choose to filter just one of the generators before. So I can filter Gen 1 before it gets to Gen 2. At least that's how I understand it. And I can also choose what form of synthesis blending I'm going to do to these two things. Go to corner two, filter two. These filters don't have to be assigned to a particular corner. Like you can actually borrow filters from um, each corner or each section and apply them to different parts of each corner. It's it's a lot. What do we do to this one? Uh, let's make it glassy. Listen to that. That's so cool. I wish I could have that lfo would I mean, technically I can. I can go to, let's see, this one, and dial in the same settings. 
kind of go right there. And then corner four, we'll do the same thing. Something like that. Eh, let's make this one a little weirder. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. Okay, so let's exit this mode. And now you can see that we're moving. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a more appropriate sort of series of settings here. Let's talk about the uh, looper delay and the uh, arpeggiator because they're both neat. So um, I'm going to set up a simple kick drum over here and we're going to do some looping. Okay, let's talk about the delay and the arp because they sort of have a relationship. Over here, there is this active slash uh, feed direction thing and by Switching these around, you can choose to send the uh, the signal that's playing to the delay, to both the ARP and the delay, or just to ARP. With this on and off, the ARP will become active. So let's talk about the delay as a looper real quick. Let's go over here, and I'm going to play. You're synced. So if you turn the delay feedback all the way up to 100 with a delay time at 1, this basically becomes a looper, which is really, really cool. So I'm gonna to choose to turn you turn up the delay real quick. I'm gonna to choose to feed this to both right now, and we're gonna play a sequence. So I'm gonna turn off my feed to the delay, and I'm gonna go back here, and I'm going to edit my sound a little bit. Go back here, feed it to delay. Go back. Let's go ahead and hit our thing here. I can create these loopable sequence that I can like play over if I want. It's pretty 
cool. All right, let's talk about our friend, the arpeggiator. It works uh, both like as you would expect, and also has some interesting features to it. So let's go ahead and set up uh, an ARP sequence that we can play with. All right, let's adjust our delay time. Let's go back to here. Get that ARP going. So I can hit active, feed it to the ARP. Oh, that's nice. This little sweet spot right here that we just arrived in. It's one of my favorite ways that this thing works, where you get this sort of like almost side chain pumping of the timbres because of the way that uh, your suborbiter, excuse me, your orbiter and your suborbiters are working together. And we can increase or decrease that based on the suborbiter size. I think it's neat. Let's go ahead and get our delay in. This is going to sound different depending on what mode you're in. Right now we're in poly, so we're getting all those suborbiters going because our release is pretty long. We have less suborbiters if we decrease the release, but these are all sort of like hanging out over each other, which is pretty nice actually. But if we go to mono mode, we'll get a different experience. See that our little sequencer here has some stuff like note tie. Let's go to mono mode, turn up glide a bit. You can hear that glide now, those note ties. Isn't that fucking cool? We're also getting some octave shifts here, which is nice. Turn things up and down. And then there's some sort of auto-refreshing that can happen here. So let's hit this dice button and this dice button. Now we'll see some stuff auto-shifting. So probabilistic uh, sequence generation, which is really, really, really cool. Very, very cool. Now, we can also feed the sequencer some stuff. So let's go ahead and reset our patch and we'll feed the sequencer some uh, some notes that will play back for us. Make sure that we are synced, wonderful. I'm gonna hit record and I'm going to uh, clear this over here. There we go. Make sure that I am feeding the ARP and you can see the little record button is active there. playing back the notes that I just sent to it. Let's go ahead and make this sound a little bit more interesting. So, well, we'll work as a traditional ARP, you can also send it your own sequence, which I just think is super cool.
wild little friend. Um, I hope this has been fun for you. I've definitely had a long, long fun time doing this. Uh, I think I've recorded for about an hour. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but um, thank you so much to uh, Vector for sending this crazy thing over. Uh, it's been a blast playing with it. I'm excited about integrating it into some more, um, uh, you know, performance environments. Right now, I've just been using it with the Deluge, and um, it's been really, really great in that respect. Um, if you have any questions, uh, place them in the comments. I believe that uh, Vector is making a new batch of these um, to coincide. Well, this video is going to co come out around the time that they have a new batch ready to go. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, um, they've been very, very quick to uh, jump on any kind of like firmware issues or like timing issues or any kind of issue that I found out. So uh, that's always a really good sign when a company is doing that kind of thing. Um, you would be hard pressed to find anything like this out in the world. It is built like a tank um, and it's just an incredibly engaging, fun to experiment with little friend um, that can go from extremely ambient to really, really nasty if you want to. As always, thank you for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Remy's Recording, and I hope you have a, uh, a wonderfully vectory day.